What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. I gotta, I gotta fix my collar here. I didn't realize my collar was looking so, so messy. There we go. Hey, man, we are back at it again with another Copart walk around over here at 2829 Southeast 15th Street here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We had some nasty weather the other day, so it's gonna be pretty muddy out here. So you know what I did? I put on my boots. You guys suggested I get some boots. Well, I've, I've had boots. I just don't wear them because, no, no offense to you men that wear boots but it's kind of like walking in high heels. And I want all of you to never think about how I know that and don't ever ask me how I could possibly know what walking in high heels is like. I'm just saying walking in boots has got me walking like a penguin or something, man. So let's jump into this video with number one on my list, a 2019 Chevrolet Impala. This car is like new, man. It's really not, but I mean, it's a 2019. It's, it's dang near new. And she got a little hit on the side. Uh, clear title. This is a uh, Hertz rent -a car Hertz Rent-A-Car. Okay, it's got 41,000 miles on the odometer. So she's she's seen she's seen the country. Honestly, <laughs> she's probably been just about everywhere. Beautiful car so far. Now, one of the great things about rental cars is when they're damaged, a lot of times they don't go through like a traditional insurance company and they get salvaged and things like that. A lot of times the rental car companies are self-insured, which means they won't carry a branded title when they're wrecked. The, the, it, the rental car companies typically send them off, get them fixed as cheaply as possible, get them back on the road, and they usually sell them before they have too many miles on them so they can maximize on the resale value of the car and minimize diminished value from age, mileage, things of that nature. Here's the damage. Hood, bumper, grill, headlight, fender. The door, surprisingly, is okay. The door is okay. That looks like, that is definitely feces on the side. That That is feces, and that is fur. So I can already tell you what happened. That was a deer, and the deer crapped itself all down the side of the car, and I'm not joking. Like, a lot of you are probably gonna think this is that I'm joking, and it's, it's I, I'm truly not. You could see the tufts of fur over here as well. This was, uh, this was an aminal, an, aminal? This was an aminal. <laughs> this was an animal, most likely a deer. And I know it seems strange that they would run into the side of the car. Seen it a million times, guys. Seen it a million times. So, uh, thankfully, we don't have a lot of blood and gore or anything over here. Fender apron is definitely uh, tweaked. There's definitely a, a significant amount of work to be done here but it's doable it's 100 percent doable and it's low miles that is that is nasty though <laughs> like that is that is nasty um okay i almost, <laughs> almost don't even want to touch it because like i know there's there's quite literally crap on on the door let's take a seat no bags are deployed seat belt tensioner good yes it is all right let's go ahead and fire it up Yeah, she runs great, as, it, as to be expected for a 40,000 mile 2019 car. Runs absolutely great. Make sure we pop that. I'm not gonna bother checking uh, like air conditioning and things like that. We, we already know they work, guys. We already know they work. I, I love this generation Impala. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I, I really do. Like, I love this gen. Impala. It is a big, beefy American car, man. Let's get us a little better view of what's going on with the fender apron under here. Uh, move this out of the way. Actually, guys, I think it's all right. I do. I think, uh, obviously, this top piece is tweaked a little bit. Uh, and this plastic piece here is shot. Yeah, guys, there's some broken plastics in this fender and the hood and the bumper and the headlight and the grill. But honestly, I think this goes right back together. I do. I think this goes right back together. The headlight is the main piece that's missing over there. So once you put a headlight back in it, this is an easy fix. I mean, a really easy fix, and it's not a salvage title. Good tires all the way around. Rest of the body looks good. This is nice. This is real nice. 
And, and as you would expect, she runs 100% perfect. Okay. Well, this will probably go for outside of my price range, but I'm going to keep it on the list anyway. You never know. You never know, man. Oh, let's see what kind of goodies she's got in here. It's a loaded car. I love these leather seats and that stitching, that brown stitching. Very, very nice. Very nice. All right. This one is on the list because you, you just don't know, guys. Oops, yeah, I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You just know, no, don't know. Something like this could go ridiculously cheap. Somebody may just be missing it in the auction, not see it, and you could get a good deal on it. So, hey, I'm hoping that one of these days I can score me something like this. Next on my list, oh man, you guys know how I am with these Corvettes. And one day I'm gonna get one. One day I am going to get one. I'm not the biggest fan of the C5, and to be honest, I've never owned a C5. I've owned several C3s, several C4s, I've owned a C6, I've owned a C7, never a C5. Just, it just never really appealed to me, but I'll be honest with you, the older the car gets, the more I find myself really thinking it's a beautiful car. Last generation of the pop-up headlights, right? And the pop-up headlights in this classic rear end is really what made Corvette stand out. Okay, it's not. That timeless shape of the sloping rear roof, it's kind of like an eggshell, teardrops down. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful car. I like these wheels. Tires appear to be nice. Uh, it's got previous accident history. Uh, Carfax report definitely shows it's been, it's been in a few car accidents in its day, but it's a low mileage, uh, retail red, Corvette, 102,000 miles is not bad. This is a, a 5.7 that can handle its own. These things age very well. And the price is very, very reasonable right now. At this point, this is clean. Even the interior and the plastics on these are so bad. The, the console's usually broken and it's not. Uh, ride control, touring, sport, performance. This has the adaptive suspension as well. Now that I'm pretty sure is aftermarket. I've never seen a C5 with badges on the side like that. Will the struts hold? Yes, they will. Huh, okay. So it looks like somebody has uh, disconnected the headlights. So most likely the headlight motors are bad and, uh, and somebody disconnected them to, uh, you know, be able to manually lift them up and down you can do that with this knob right here uh i don't remember which way you go with it but yeah, i'm not gonna mess with it right now anyway that's a just a minor detail it is full of coolant that's one of the things you got to look out for when you see a corvette any gen sitting out here at the yard is that it ran over something and everything up top may look good but it may have just destroyed everything underneath and this looks like Possibly that may be what actually happened here. I can't I can't really get under here to see uh, Maybe not Maybe that's an air deflector that helps deflect air into the rad. That would be my guess Like I said, I've never had a c5 before so honestly don't know I always look to see if the radiator is contorted in any way It's got a newer upper hose definitely see that the engine is really clean, guys. Really, really clean. Looks 100% stock. Like I said, it is full of coolant. So we'll pull the dipstick, check the oil. Oil is full as well. And I would think in 99, they would still have a trans dipstick on this. And I'm not 100% certain on that either. I don't see a trans dipstick over here. I could be totally missing it. So if you see it, definitely holler at me, but uh, I don't. I'll look over here just to double check. This was an automatic, right? I'm sure it was, yes. Okay, I don't see a trans dipstick. Uh, it's possible that I missed it because, you know, I'm always in a hurry when I'm out here. I try to look these cars over as best I can, as quickly as possible. Heads up display. This is a, this is a fairly well-optioned car. 
And I don't know why it's here. That's my big concern. Why is it here? It looks perfect, and it's only uh, it's only three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars with the auction ending in just a few hours. Now, uh, truth be told, I plan on bidding this one up a little bit, but knowing my luck, I won't get it. A car like this is valued at what retail, with a clean title and everything, what ten, twelve grand? I don't know. I honestly haven't looked. So I expect it to go for around six. If that's the case, we might just bring this home. Let's put a booster pack on it, see if it runs. All right, we got the booster pack installed. We got some corner lights lighting up here. So we've got power. Very stock too. Like I'm, I'm really surprised how stock this car actually is. I really like this adaptive suspension, which Honestly, at 100,000 miles, probably doesn't work, but service vehicle soon. Ooh. There we go. All right, we have ABS, traction control, ride control. Yeah, I knew that, and security. Oh, boy. Well, she does fire right up. Service vehicle soon. I was hoping that ride control light would go out. No. No, it didn't. Okay, well, I'm going to assume that, that turning these does absolutely nothing at this point, which I kind of, I kind of figured that. E-brake is good. I don't see any signs of it being smoked in down in there that's clean little cup holder if you even could call that a cup holder well she runs good there's no check engine lights yet let's make sure the important window works it does and so does that okay very nice pop the hatch as well Heads up display. Let's turn it on. I can I don't know if you guys can see it. It's actually pretty dim. Uh, you might be able to see it if I if I zoom you in a little bit. Then again, no, you're not going to be able to see it. Okay, that's fine. Let's give it a little rev. Oil pressure is good. She's got half a tank of gas. Battery voltage looks good. Another thing I like to check is the steering. Um, you never know if these cars ran over something and damaged the suspension. So it's good to just get a feel for the steering wheel and make sure that the wheels, when you center it, are both sitting straight. Put it in gear. Oh yeah, right on the money, man. She goes right into gear. Very nice. Definitely want to check the air conditioning as well. Although it looks like the uh, the display there is not functioning. We'll just turn it all the way down. AC is not turning on. It seems to be refusing. It just flashes. The AC light here just flashes when you turn it on. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't know if anything here is even working. Yeah, AC is refusing to do anything, so. The radio. Okay, the radio works, but there's like no bass at all. It sounds horrible. Uh, it just sounds, the radio sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the temperature is finally starting to come off of cold, so that's good. Let's take a look in the hatch real quick. I do want to look at these wheels a little bit closer. Tires really look good. They're Nexons. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with this stereo, guys, but man, it sounds horrible. Uh, I guess, oh, that's typical GM 
uh, quality right there from the 90s. My guess would be that uh, the amplifier is blown. Let's see what's under here. Like I said, I've never had a C5, so it's just nothing but extra storage space, I guess. Okay. Make sure this closes good. It does. She seems to be running great. There's a pulley under there definitely making a little bit of noise. She's smooth, guys. Check this wheel, too. Looks good. I want to double check that the front wheels are straight and in line with each other. And... It looks like it. Probably an idler or a tensioner pulley making a tad bit of noise up here. Uh, if you guys know anything about the active suspension on this car and common issues, definitely drop those comments down below. I'm guessing that it's not really going to affect the way the car runs and drives. You just don't have use of that active body control. Where are the headlights? Huh. Oh, right here. Like I said, the headlights most likely aren't going to do anything. The lights may be on, but I guarantee you the motors won't be. Oh, great. I just sat in something wet. Yeah, now I'm soaked. And you actually open these by turning this one direction or the other. At least that's how it's supposed to work. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah, you can see the headlights aren't on at all. Why? I don't know. Somebody obviously disconnected them. And, uh, you know, we're not here to work on cars, guys. We can look at them. We can kind of test things out, but we can't be, you know, messing with all the wiring and stuff like that. So we just got to leave it the way it is and hope that uh, it's nothing more than a bad uh, motor or two. Alternators charging at 13.5 with uh, some of the lights on, anyway. That seems to be okay. It should probably be a little more than that, but I'm going to say it's probably fine. Sit this up here. Uh, we can close the hood. That side is closed. And this side, I think, is still... Yeah, it's closed. Okay. There's a little bit of an imperfection in the hood here. You can see how it sticks up your finger will run right into it um, over here too so you know if you pushed this down I'm sure there's a way of adjusting it maybe removing a shim or something I think you could straighten that out honestly though considering the amount of accidents this car has been in it, it actually looks really good I don't know if you guys see something that I missed see we do have lights on back here so that's good it's just those headlights are unplugged signals I'm sure function yep okay I'm I'm satisfied with that I don't know why it's here I don't see anything wrong with it uh, like the body lines are great she's a good-looking car guys uh, fingers crossed man I've been trying to win one of these from Copart or IA for quite some time now, and I just can't seem to get my hands on one. They always go too high. So uh, we'll see what happens. Next on my list, yeah, we're looking at another one, guys. Uh, 2013 Ford Escape. I mean, a 2013 Range Rover. Look, I don't care if it is a Ford Escape underneath. I still think this is a very sexy looking vehicle. I do. I really do. Now, the last one went for about eight grand. It needed a considerable amount of work, and I wasn't willing to pay $8,000 for something that needed that much work, and we couldn't get to run. This one looks a lot better. We know where the damage is. It's got a nice set of matching tires. She's clean, but this one does have a considerable amount of miles on it. It's got 179,000 miles. So for those saying that Land Rovers and Range Rovers are just unreliable pieces of junk, I gotta tell you, man, the fact that Ford 
came in and basically put their powertrains into these, I think did a lot of good for the brand. I, I, there'll be people that agree and people that disagree with me on that. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, so it needs a knee bag. It needs a, a, a wheel bag. Thankfully, it didn't blow the dash. And of course, the uh, pre-tensioner is blown as well. Let's see if we can take a look at the front. And one thing I do notice, and I, I can't tell, is that suspension crooked? I don't know. To me, it almost looks like the wheel is going inward. Uh, that's something I'll just kind of keep in mind here. I wouldn't see any reason why there'd be suspension damage. It looks like they probably just rear-ended somebody. Damage looks minimal. The fenders are still good. The bumper, no, bumper is trashed. All right, the hood looks like it survived. There we go. The uh, upper support here, uh, you, you guys call it whatever you want. I call it an upper core support. Um, you guys may call it a header panel. I call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But it looks like, oh no, the headlight didn't survive. I'm looking right at the tabs that are broken. All right, so we're looking at a headlight. This part is good. A headlight, a bumper. The crash bar, obviously, is toast. Uh, I'm, I think it's safe to say the condenser is bad as well. <laughs> I'd say even if it's not, you should replace that, considering how damaged it is. We'll see if it's got any coolant in it. I'm going to guess that probably not. Uh, we probably took out the radiator at the same time. Oh, boy. you got to love these plastic... Uh, expansion tanks and caps man they just no it actually she may have coolant i don't i don't think so guys i don't think so i mean that looks like it took out the radiator um another thing to notice it can be hard to tell on some of these but you got to really look closely you can see that cracked windshield right there okay windshields aren't cheap these have rain sensing uh sensors in them rain sensing sensors yeah that makes a lot of sense so uh you got to keep that in mind. There is your bleeder screw right there. That's actually kind of nice that it's right there. I don't feel any coolant. So we can go ahead and fire it up. I'm not going to let it run very long at all. And we'll see if we got any weird lights on the dash here. Should get a low coolant light immediately. We got a battery light. We got to check engine light. Let's turn off. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the uh, button is to turn all this off. There we go, something like that. Okay, we have a battery light. Um, coolant level low, yeah, figured that. Obviously airbag light, check engine light. Yeah, she goes right into gear, guys, right into gear both directions so that's good and what I think is really cool watch this when you turn it off <laughs> yeah I love that guys I do this is nice this is nice I like this one I think this one for me would be well worth a little bit more risk just because it looks like it was taken care of the body's in great shape the work that's needed to put it back together honestly minimal the fact that it starts up and runs uh, if I'm going to put something like this back together, it's going to be it's going to be like an eBay special or carparts.com type deal, man. I'm I'm going to just find me some local parts. Doesn't matter if it matches or not. It's a pretty common black color. Shouldn't be too hard to get painted and blended. Uh, Mako could make this thing look brand new. Do do the do the body work yourself. What little there is, and uh, send it in for paint. Get a windshield and off you go, man. But you know, at the same time. It is almost a 200,000 mile Range Rover, but honestly, guys, I wouldn't care. I'd drive the heck out of it. Next, a 2005 Honda Civic Hybrid. I don't know why we're looking at this, but it's a Honda, it's a hybrid, and so far I don't see anything too major wrong with it. Definitely some gap issues, man. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Um... Yeah. All right. Eh, you know, uh, some slight 
fitment issues on the body panels. 180,000 miles, which is nothing for a Honda. Now, that's not to say that the, the battery pack doesn't have issues or that there's not, you know, something hybrid related wrong with it. It also appears that it is sat in the sun for a considerable amount of time and ugh, welcome to Oklahoma. Okay, you know, it's 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 not bad for what it is. Yeah, it's not bad at all, guys. It's not even that dirty. We got airbags intact. Yes, we do. Very nice. This is actually in pretty decent shape. Uh, again, uh, just don't don't look at the front end. If you don't look at the front end, you won't be disappointed. It's not bad, guys. It probably won't sell for a whole heck of a lot. It's worth firing up. Oh, ew. Okay, the steering wheel is a little uh, a little ugh, gross. Now, do we get an IMA failure? Oh, what we get is a. Uh, we get a dead battery. That's what we get. Make sure the hood is popped. Well, this car is like, it's like sitting on the ground. You just kind of fall right into it. Let me go ahead and put a booster pack on it and let's see if we can get it to fire up. All right, booster pack is hooked up. Let's see what she does. What do you think, IMA failure, yes or no? I'm thinking definitely. All right, here we go. Well, we've got a battery light. Now that has nothing to do with IMA. That is uh, more likely just the bat alternator. We have a maintenance required light, an airbag light, a battery light. It looks like it's good on fuel. The temperature, surprisingly, is actually already is already moving up. Maybe somebody started it before me. Uh, it shows that the hybrid system is charging. I'll tell you this, though, it feels like she's misfiring. I'm surprised we don't have a check engine light on here. Let's check out air conditioning. Always got to check out the AC. Ah, she's running. She's running better. It's clearing up, but the idle's going up as well. Okay. Let's see, AC, what do you think? Maybe, let's check the important window. Important window works. Second most important window works. The AC does not feel cold. That's fine, let's go ahead and put it in gear right into gear. Ooh, she's trying to die. Oh, look at her stalling out. Yeah, she's, uh, I'm really surprised we don't have a check engine light. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of wondering if maybe the check engine light is burned out or something. Okay, but you know what we don't have? We don't have an IMA light. We don't have a, an IMA failure, at least not yet. Of course, that could take a little while. And we don't have a whole heck of a lot of time. Okay, so we do have a battery light on, but as you can see, the alternator is charging at 14 plus volts. So, huh, maybe the battery itself is bad. I also noticed the cooling fan is on, which tells me that the AC may actually be running. I'm looking down at the compressor. You can't really see it, I guess. Right there. Right, right there. And we can see that the clutch is not spinning. You can see that the engine is definitely misfiring. 100% for sure misfiring. She's not happy at all. Yeah. Could need a tune-up. Or it could be something more sinister. Yeah, guys, I... Uh, 
I don't know. I thought this might be a cool little car, but honestly... Yeah, I'm not feeling this one. Not at all. I think this one's going to be a headache. So, moving on to the next one. Last on the list, we got a 2014 Chevy SS. I'm not going to lie. I never really cared for this car. I, I just never really understood the need for a four-door LS vehicle. But with that said, it's another one of those cars that it seems as, as they age, or maybe it's more uh, of how I age, as I age, I actually start really liking these cars. And I'll be honest with you, the first one that I saw that I really, really liked was uh, the one on Melly's World. Um, from uh, Lucky's Wheels and Deals in Melly's World on YouTube, man. I saw hers and I was like, okay, that car is honestly pretty sick. Now, looking like this, just kind of standard, I, I don't really see it as much. But uh, hers is absolutely sick, man. It's a nice car. It's, it's roomy. It's got beautiful leather. It's got nice accent stitching. Feels kind of like suede. It's not Alcantara, I don't believe. I believe that's suede. But look at the look at the red stitching here. The embroidered seats. You've got the chrome accents. Uh, oh, this pretensioner is blown in the locked up position. That's a sure. It's really nice, and I really love the accent stitching. I really do. This is listed as a start. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't move. So. Let's give her just a quick, you know what? I know why it won't move, I'll bet. Uh, well, number one, she's dead. But number two, it probably snapped the radiator. And with the radiator being broken, it probably lost all of its trans fluid. Um, whoever buys the car, though, lots of change, man. You get, you get lots of change. Quarters, nickels, dimes. Uh, this car comes with free money. And free stuff. All right, let's... Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to get in the hood. Um, we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. Whew, man. Ouch. Yeah, so you can see that whatever it was either impacted the car going this direction. It wasn't head on. Or this car ran into something at that angle. Pushed the frame rail significantly over. Uh, the radiator is still there. So is the condenser. And it actually looks like the radiator may still be intact. Oh, it was, oh, wow. Okay. Who? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's the radiator. Um, no, there's plugs disconnected too for the mass airflow sensor. Uh, roto, uh, roto fab, cold air intake. Yeah, this this whole front end got tweaked. The whole front end has been pushed over. And you got to really watch this. You see how this uh, this hood lift is about to hit the positive? Man, we don't want that. We, we, don't, we don't want that. No, sir. Oh, my goodness. Great. Uh, <laughs> I'm not to put this camera down. I am not going to be responsible for burning a car down today. You can look at it from this angle. You can really see how much... The front end was pushed. I mean, that was that was pretty bad, guys. That was pretty bad. Now, sure, you could cut the rails. You could probably replace them, and the car would probably be all right. But no, nah, this one's just been pushed over far too much for my liking, guys. But I'll be honest with you. I've seen a ton of other people on YouTube. They get in there, they do it, they get it done, and it comes back looking as good as new. So I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying that it's one of those things for me I wouldn't I wouldn't be messing with this one but uh it's still a beautiful car nonetheless that's a wrap and with that ladies and gentlemen we are gonna get out of here auction day man I'm excited I'm really excited I got I got a couple things here at Copart you already saw one of them in this video that I'm looking at uh, another one you won't see until the next Copart walk around it's something I can't, I'm not going to get into it. But anyway, I think it's super cool. I think it's also going to go for super cheap. It doesn't run, it doesn't drive, but it looks really, really good. I've also got uh, three or so cars at IA that I'm hoping to get into as well. So I'm hoping that 
over this next couple weeks, uh, things kind of get back to normal and pick up around here. But for now, we're going to get out of here. If you enjoyed the content, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you enjoyed the content. Drop those comments down below. What was your favorite car of this walk around? And just for fun, comment how much you would pay or bid for each one of the cars that you would have been interested in. Until next time, stay safe out there, buddy. I look forward to catching you all very soon in the next one.